Our next guest saying when it comes to Tesla, he doesn't always agree with Elon Musk, but he made the company what it is. Let's bring in a former Tesla board member, Steve Wesley, to discuss. Steve, always good to have you. Um, you've been positive, and rightly so, for quite some time on the company, on the stock to a certain extent. But I do wonder, after listening to yesterday's call, obviously the competition that has come to the fore, the price cuts, the lack of any real catalyst in 2024, seemingly, where you stand right now. Well, look, let's give Tesla credit where credit's due. They've just posted not one, but three consecutive great years. They grew 71% in 2020. They grew 51% in 2021. Last year, 19%. Those are great numbers. The challenge is going to be 2024 because they're in between new product offerings. The Model 3, Model Y, phenomenal successes. Model Y today, the largest selling vehicle in the world, gas or electric, stunning. But what about 2024? Mm -hmm. What they really need to catch up growth-wise with the BYD that grew uh, proportionally 70% last year, delivered 1.6 million vehicles to Tesla's 1.8. They're going to pass Tesla this year for sure. Tesla desperately needs to get that $25,000 model into market by late next year. So for this year, you know, they, they've got three shots on goal here that they're telling analysts. You know, the first is the, the $25,000 model, but how soon can you get that out? The second is they're clearly a leader in autonomous driving robo taxis. I think that's at least three to five years out. The interesting play that few people talk about is the Tesla Energy Division did six billion this year. It's growing at 54 percent a year. They're working on being essentially the world's largest utility. Um, that's an interesting play. Those are numbers most auto companies would die for. But 2024 is going to be a tough year. Tesla's going to have to execute on everything they do from opening the plant in Mexico to getting the plan in India built to uh, selling some more Cybertruck. It's going to be an interesting battle, and the Chinese are coming. Yeah, the Chinese are coming. BYD has a, an automobile out there that is a real competitor, not just in the Chinese market, of course, but in Europe as well. Probably never going to be here. So I wonder, are they up to it? Do you think that, you know, again, the, that timetable, Musk has typically been optimistic when it comes to the timing of things and sometimes uh, wrong. Do you think they can get there in terms of that model you're talking about to make them competitive as soon as the end of next year? I think they'll get initial sales out by then, but they need to do better. Here's the big picture most uh, investors don't fully understand. We're living in an international world. Tesla dominates the U.S., 51% market share, more than everybody else combined. But we're now the second largest market in the world uh, after China. China sold 8 million EVs last year. All of Europe together did about 2.6 to 3 million. U.S. and Canada did 1.6 million. So where do you want to be number one? China. So U.S. dominating, uh, Tesla dominating in U.S., dominating, frankly, in Europe. But they've got to get out to that rest of the world because that is where the money is being made. But there's one other issue investors need to look at, and that is for the last 10 years when it comes to EVs, it's all been about range and price. Now it's moving over to being about tariffs and privacy. Because as you point out, uh, you know, will Tesla and will BYD come to the U.S.? They're absolutely coming to the U.S. They're already selling buses here successfully. They've started selling in Europe. But consumers are increasingly going to ask the question, do I feel comfortable driving a car with a Chinese IoT device that knows where I'm going, maybe listening in on me? That's a big issue. And then the tariff issue is another big one. U.S. needs to be careful on tariffs because we may feel good with the 25 percent tariff we've slapped on. But there's a much bigger auto market in China than there is here. And if China reciprocates, uh, we may think twice about that.